You ever lost a child in a crowded place? I have. Lost our Chelsea before. Lost Lauren before. Kids kind of wander off at times, don't they? They kind of ease around. You're like, have you ever had a kid go in a clothing store and the next thing you know they're in a clothing rack? And Right? What happened? They got in there and they hid. And what do you do when your child hides from you? Outside of panic, <laughs> what do you start doing? Call their name. You walk around. The problem is, how many other Laurens and how many other Chelsea's are in the store? All of a sudden, you look around and all these kids are there. Yeah. <laughs> no, not you, mine. So how do you identify them even, even further? You identify them with the last name. And uh, names have significance to it. I, when, I, when I would get in trouble, how many of you know that name? The whole name. The whole name. Um, whenever you, you talk about that, you're, uh, you're like, okay, my mom, if I ever heard her go, and some of you don't know my first name, so here we go. My first name is not LaVon. My first name is not Pastor. <laughs> right? That's how most people know me. That's Pastor. You know, and kids, they know me. Who's that? That's Pastor. Well, I love that because that's, that's how I ad- I'm identified in ministry. They recognize my position in, in ministry. But if I ever heard Louis LaVon, I... It's, it's hide time. Right? It's hide time. But I went back and I looked, and I don't mind it now when people call me Louis LeVon, because I went back and looked it up. And the name Louis actually means famous warrior. Come on. And the name LeVon means white. So I'm a famous warrior that's white. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Right? I looked it up and I went, they knew what they were doing. You see, what is the first thing you do when a child's born? Outside of going, ooh, oh. And now the mother's going, we're never having another one. Better figure out how to have it. That's what Brenda told me after uh, Chelsea was born. If you want any more, you better figure out how to have them. We, we give them a name because that's their identity. Why? Because a name is how we ad- are identified from everyone else. Your name, even though it may not be unique, is an identifying factor to who you belong to even though you may be a George Jones you may be whatever your name you know is is unique to you when a child's born we give them a name a name gives us identity it gives us connection that's why so many people uh, did the ancestry thing they wanted to find out what their heritage was Did you know that up until the 1100s, most people only had one name? They weren't three or four names. It was one name. It was only beginning in the 1100s that we started talking about surnames or second names. The Bible gives one name to most people in the Old Testament. It identifies them then, secondly, by their parentage, who they they are. As an example... Abraham, son of Terah. Moses, the son of Aram. It's Joshua, the son of Nun. David, the son of Jesse. They they linked it to their lineage. You see, in the culture that Jesus lived, in the culture in which Jesus was named, names had significance. In other words, a child was to live out 
the name that he was given. And names had rich, significant meanings. Throughout the years, people have gone in and changed their names because they didn't like their, the name they were born with. Or if they were an actor, here's some, some people that changed their names. How many of you know John, the name John Wayne? Where's all my Western watching people in the house? Come on. His real name is Marion Michael Morrison. Lame, right? John Wayne, right? It would probably surprise you to know Stevie Wonder. How many of you know the name Stevie Wonder? His real name is Steveland Morris. A few years ago, when country and western was real big, there was a singer who was known by Conway Twitty. Right? Conway Twitty, his name was Harold Jenkins. You see... A lot of people want to change their identity by, by changing their name. But there's a name that we are given whenever <clears throat> we become a Christ follower. And that name is child of God. We are a child of God. I am Louis Levon Pettis. My lineage is child of God. I want you to think about that. So whenever you start signing your name, I don't know that it's going to help you any. You know, you may be, you know, writing Louis LeVon Pettis, child of God. And they're like. Great witnessing tool though, right? You see, in the Bible, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 1 tells us a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. A good name. How many times do we tell our kids, you know, this is your name, go out and represent. I would tell my girls, you're a pettis. And in the community, they couldn't get away with hardly anything. Because I worked with law enforcement. I was, you know, uh, I, I was a pastor in town. And I remember Lauren saying one time uh, someone uh, saw her car and they knew the vehicles that my kids drive. Mainly because I told them what my kids drive. <laughs> right? There's got to be some benefits to this. And they would come up and they'd go, hey, Lauren. How do they know me? She goes, Dad, why does everyone know me? And I said, because I told everybody who you are. You see, their name is, is attached back. And our name is attached back. But the greatest name that we find, and it's a name that has power. It's a name that has authority. It's a name that has substance to it. In Isaiah... He prophesied about a child being born. He said, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. I don't know about you, but everything I need is packaged in that. He is wonderful. He is a counselor. He is mighty God. He is my everlasting father. And when I need it, he is the prince of peace. In Revelation chapter 1 verse number 8, he said, I am Alpha Omega. I am the beginning and the ending. I am the one who is, who was, and is to come. I am almighty. You see... I love this that I found when I was researching the names and the impact to the name. It says, to the artist, Jesus is the fairest of 10,000 and the one who is altogether lovely. 
To the astronomer, he is the light of the world and the bright and morning star. To the baker, he's the bread of life. To the banker, he is the hidden treasure. To the builder, he's the solid rock and the chief cornerstone. To the farmer, he is the sower who went forth to sow. To the florist, he's the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, and the bright and morning star. To the horticulturist, he is the vine, the true vine. To the judge, he's the man without fault. To the one whom there is no guile. To the juror, he's the faithful and the true witness. To the jeweler, he's part of the pearl of the great prize. To those in government, he is the eternal king of kings. To the newspaper person, he is the tidings of great joy. To the philosopher, he's the word made flesh, the truth of God. And to the preacher, he's the word of God. To the servant, he is the master, the good master. To the sick, he is the great physician. I love this. To the sinners, he's the suffering savior. To the statesman, he's the desire of all nations. To the theologian, he is the author and finisher of our faith. And to those who give toil in life, he is the rest that comes through Jesus Christ. You see, when we think of Jesus' name, he encompasses everything in our life. Whenever I need something, I call on the name of Jesus. Even those who don't know him as their personal savior, whenever there's times of crisis, what do they do? They crawl out to Jesus. It's been said there are no atheists in a foxhole. Right? When, when bullets and guns and grenades are coming in, everybody, oh, Jesus. Jesus, help me. I've, I've seen people who I know did not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. But in times of crises, He is the name that they call out to. Why? Because whether they want to identify with Him totally, they know that He is the name that can bring help and rescue to them in a time of crises. You see, it is in the name of Jesus that John tells us that we're instructed to pray. Believers pray in his name because we believe that through their name it is the exclamation point at the end of our prayer. In Luke he tells us praying in the name of Jesus means praying in his authority. In praying in Jesus' name lines up with God's character and his will. And when we pray in Jesus' name it demonstrates our faith and our power to act when we believe that Jesus is more than just a group of letters. That he is the all-sufficient answer to everything that we're going through. You see, over and over and over in Scripture, we see that when you pray in the name of Jesus, things happen. Here are some things out of Scripture that happened when the name of Jesus was, lit, was used. In Luke, the devils were powerless because of the name of Jesus. In Mark, demons were cast out because of his name. In Acts, healing occurred because of his name. Salvation came through his name. In Matthew, we see that we are to be baptized in the name of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians, we are justified in his name. In Colossians, it tells us everything we do and say is to be done in the name of Jesus. And in John 14, we find when we conclude prayer, we many times use the name of Jesus. Because John 14 says, Verily, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me, will do the works that I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to my Father and, whatever, and I will do whatever you ask, how? In my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me anything from my name and I will do it. People have used this passage though and they go, well, Pastor, I prayed for a, a new car and I didn't get it. It's because your prayers were out of line with the will of God. I mean, when you use the name of Jesus, it's not like something you just drop and go, well, I think I'm going to use this right now. It's about praying in line with the will of God. Many people have said, Pastor, how do I know the will of God for my life? Well, the word of God is the will of God. 
So what you do is you go in and you search out. You mean I've got to read some? I've got to study some? The Bible tells us study to show yourself approved, a workman of God, rightly dividing the word of truth. So whenever I'm in a situation, a lot of times we just turn around and we call and we ask someone else to pray for us. Nothing wrong with that. You need prayer partners. But I would encourage you, the first thing that you need to do is go to the Word of God. And what does God say about the situation that I'm in? Well, Pastor, I'm not a scholar of the Word. You don't have to be a scholar of the Word to find out what God's Word says to you. Most of the time, in the back of your Bible, there is a thing called a concordance. All you have to do is open it to the back. There's passages there where it'll say sickness. There are passages where it says faith. There are passages where it says salvation. You go and then you study those out. And then if you're still not sure, there is the great search engine called Google that you can go to and type in a subject and ask about it and it'll bring up scripture for you. You need to be able to understand What it means to go in and look for what God is saying in that passage. And when you find what God is saying, then you pray in line with God's word and attach the name of Jesus to it. And all of a sudden, you have dynamite that you've just lit the fuse on. Because when I pray in accordance with his word, I pray in accordance with his will, which releases his promises over my life. You see, I can't just use a name that I'm not associated with. I can't. I was talking with the people today and and, uh, some of the the people in the back. And I said, you know, I'm going to be talking about this. And this morning as I was getting ready, this is one of the nuggets that the Lord dropped in my spirit. And he said, you can't use a name you're not associated with. Can't use that name. I can't walk into the bank And walk up to him and go, hey, I need uh, $500,000. Well, really, what account would you like to draw this off? Bill Gates. Right? I can't just go in and, and throw that name around. Why? Because I'm not associated with that name. They don't know me as that name. Whenever I get... uh stopped or something what's one of the things they do they want to see your driver's license you can tell them you know they you're driving pretty fast yeah I'm Mario Andretti you know <laughs> what yeah I come from a racing family and my license says Pettis but it says Pettis on here yeah but I had I like to be part of his family I can't go in you know to uh to a restaurant here and use the owner's name and say, I'd like free food today. Well, why do you want free food? Well, because I know the owner's name. But do you know the owner? Well, we haven't really met. But I've seen their name somewhere. And I want to use their name To be able to order me all of this food. You know what they're going to look at you and say? No. You see, but a lot of times, listen to me. We want to use the name of Jesus when we don't have proper access to it because we're not in relationship with him. There are people go, well, I'm a I'm a believer. Well, that's great. But are you a Christ follower? Because the Bible tells me even the demons of hell believe. People go, I'm a believer. Well, what do you believe? Well, I believe, you know, that that we have free will and, and we can just do whatever we want to. The Bible tells us that. Yeah, he also tells you there's consequences to some of those things. But I believe it doesn't... It doesn't matter what you believe. It matters what the Word of God says. And that's where we get things messed up. Well, I believe Jesus loves me in spite of He does. But the Bible also tells us 
that sin will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, we have to go back to the very basics of where this is. But whenever I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And if you're wanting something to dig deeper into this, there's a great book out there. I believe it's by Mark Batterson, Not a Fan. You see, there's a lot of people that call themselves a a Christian, but they're a fan of it and not a follower of it. A fan is one who sits in the stands and tells everybody on the field how they should do it. A follower is one who's in the field getting beat up with everybody else. But you see, whenever I become a follower of Jesus Christ, I begin to identify with his nature, with his characteristics. Galatians chapter number 4 and verse number 7 says, You are no longer a slave, but of a son. And if a son, then you are an heir of God through Christ. Romans 8 and 17 tells us this. Now if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. You see, to be part of the family of God, we have to also share in some of the troubles and the trials that come through life. I wish that life once we accepted Jesus Christ was just all, you know, everything was good. No problems. But the reality is that being part of a family means I'm part of that family in good and bad. I'm part of that that network in good and bad. You say, in Philippians, he comes and he tells us this. In your relationship with one another... He said, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Listen, therefore, or because of those things, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And he gave him the name that is above all names. You see, in simplistic form, I'm here today to tell you this. No matter what you're going through, no matter what situation you find yourself in, no matter if you're on the highest mountain right now or if you're in the lowest valley or if you're just in that place in between where it seems things are good, I'm here to tell you today that for every attack that the enemy comes against you with, you have access as a child of God to a name that can bring everything in line. And that name is the name of Jesus. But the only way, guys, if you'll come, but the only way... You can use that name is when you are in proper relationship with God. You see, in the world that we've in, we've we've taken the name of Jesus and it's just become another abstract thing. Back in the Old Testament, whenever they would write the name of God, they wouldn't even finish it with the same pen. They would write a letter, they would dispose. They would go back, get another. They would write, they would dispose. They would write, they would dispose. Why? Because there was such reverence for the name of the Heavenly Father. But in society today, and as Christians, I believe that we've allowed the name of Jesus just to become another term that we use. And today I want to tell you, and I felt like my assignment was to tell you this. That if you have been 
out of relationship with Christ. He wants you to get back to that place to where you are identified with Him so that in the situations you find yourself in, you can speak the name of Jesus and all of the demons of hell will have to stop what they are doing. You see, it was at the name of Jesus that people were healed. It was at the name of Jesus that demons began to scream out. There was a day that Jesus got out of the boat and there was a man who came running out and he said what do we have to do with you why are you here why are you causing us trouble it was the demons that were speaking through this man and Jesus all he had to do was his name was what set them free it was the power of it I want you to listen to me whenever we were talking we were singing this song today we got to that place I speak the name of Jesus over all anxiety. I speak the name of Jesus over depression. I speak the name of Jesus over your family. Today, I felt to remind you, and you may have said, you know, Pastor, man, I've been praying in the name of Jesus and nothing has changed. Can I ask you something? Were you looking for the miraculous? Or were you looking for the power that he gives you of confidence in who he is? A lot of times we think the name of Jesus didn't work if there's not an instantaneous thing. But could it be that Jesus is just asking you to keep coming to him because maybe you need it more than the situation needs it? I'm going to say that again. Have you ever thought... That Jesus is beckoning you through a situation and you keep coming back because maybe you need Him more than the miracle needs Him right then. There's a lot of times when we allow the things of life to get so weighty on us. We feel like we're just trudging through, through mud. But I'm here to tell you there's something happening in the spirit world all around communities. It is a hunger from people, not just to come to church, but to experience Jesus. And I am unapologetically in love with Jesus. I am unapologetically believing that the greater things are still to come. One of the things that we did while we were at Network Gathering was they printed out maps of the regions that, that we're over. I, I have the honor of serving as a presbyter in, in an area. I, I served from Cottondale to Grand Ridge and all the way up to Kynard. I have that region in there with about 13 churches that we help and we, we help minister to. One of the things they did, one of the most powerful moments, I, I think, of that whole gathering was they printed out maps of the regions that we, we are in. And they laid them out on a gymnasium floor. And as we walked in that day, they gave us oil, symbolic of the presence of God. And they told us to take that oil and we prayed for each other. There was a lot of praying that was going on because that's what we need in the world today. Amen. And then they said, we want you to go to your region. And we want you to pray over your region. Wednesday night, if you're not in a small group, I encourage you to come and be with us in here. Because on the floor, laying right out here is going to be that big map. And we're going to be praying over that map. And you say, well, Pastor, I can't be in there Wednesday. Don't worry, Sunday, I'm going to be talking about the power of prayer. And we're going to pray over that map again. Well, Jake, you're speaking, aren't you? It's Senior Sunday. Next Sunday. So I, get, I still have a Sunday? I still have a Sunday. I'm looking over here at my admin. She's going, Lord, help me. 
So we're going to be talking on prayer. And we're going to encourage you to come around. We're going to stand around that map. You go, we can't all get there. But we're going to stand around the best we can. We're going to pray. Because you know what happened whenever I was looking at that map? I looked at that map. And as I walked up there, I looked down. It's like the Holy Spirit said to me. There's a lot of people that live on these streets that you don't know about. You see, in working with law enforcement, I go into places and I'm like, there are people living in these woods everywhere. There's pig trails that go back here into places I never knew about. You get back there and there's four or five houses back there. The Holy Spirit began to speak to me and he said, you need to speak the name of Jesus over these roads where these people live that they don't know about me. You need to speak the name of Jesus over there. There's people out there that are in addictive lifestyles that haven't heard the word of Jesus yet. There's people out there that are hurt and broken. There's families that are in turmoil out there and you need to speak the name of Jesus over them. There's people out there that are contemplating suicide that you don't know and they need to know that Jesus, I care about them. You need to speak the name of Jesus over and then there's people that live in beautiful homes that people drive by and they go, oh, they must have it all together. But inside those walls are conflict. There's anxiety. There's, there's inner turmoil that's going on. Everything looks beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, it's a mess inside there. We need to speak Jesus over those places. And so today I've come to prep you to entice you to get close to the Father so that you can use the name of Jesus in the appropriate way. Because whenever I use his name, you know what happens? He says, do I know you? Oh, yes. Yeah, I know you. You love me. You are unapologetically in love with me. You talk about me wherever you go. So today, if you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm battling with anxiety. I'm battling with depression. I'm battling with something in my life. I'm battling because I'm feeling unloved. I'm battling because there is turmoil. I'm battling because I'm in a dark place. I want to tell you today, we unapologetically love Jesus. And one of the things we are unapologetic about is opening a place where you can come and pray. Because I believe one of the greatest culminations there can be to a service is when people experience Jesus. Whenever they experience the power of Jesus. And there's something about coming and just kneeling in His presence or standing in His presence. Pastor, why do y'all lift hands? Because we're surrendering it to God and we're giving Him the glory for what He's going to do. So today, as they begin to sing this song, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, I ask you to come, kneel before Him, and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. If you're here today and you're going through a battle, Pastor, what will people think if I get up and walk to the front? They will think you're the smartest person on the face of the earth. Well, Pastor, I, I come down every week and I don't think anyone's keeping roll but I think Jesus is seeing your heart so right now Father in the name of Jesus as we begin to open this time of worship and prayer Father I ask you right now to settle in this place we speak here today and you need prayer for healing over to my right if you're here today and you just need, need to get closer to God and you need to lay something at his feet over here to my left to your right if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and you need salvation right here in front of this podium so if you need healing to my right if you need salvation right here in front of me. 
If you need to just talk to Jesus about something that's going on, over here to my left, you just find your place. But right now, over this congregation, I speak the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Declaring there Maybe some of my prayer warriors over here at the healing free. side over here. Some of my I ladies. Speak Jesus. Your name is power, and your name is healing. Come on. Your name. Sometimes as you're maybe 
in the audience of what's happening around here. There's people today that are at these altars that have received reports that's going to change their life. There's people here that are have received reports that can change the dynamics of so many different things. There's people that are here today that are bruised, that are broken, that just need to feel that connection. Today, as we had a message in tongues with an interpretation, people go, what in the world? We unapologetically believe that the times of the Spirit have not passed with the disciples. We unapologetically believe that the Holy Spirit still works in ways that we totally don't understand. Unapologetically. That's who we are. You hear people today screaming out. You're going, oh, what in the world? Have you ever been in pain before? And all you could do was just scream it out? You see, that's what you hear. There's people in pain looking for that answer. And all they know to do is express it. But can I tell you something more than that? What you see people doing today is loving on each other. Because as a family, we have one name. We are identified through the name of Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and my Savior.